All right, so the first thing I like to do is dry the fish off because we just got them out like in the last video, rinsed them, not worried about the inside of them, but just the outside to get that slime off of them. Not worried about it for now. So, and then additionally, if it seems like it's pretty stationary on the board, I'm not going to worry about it. Sometimes if I'm trying to do a lot of them, I'll sit and put a paper towel underneath of it. Everybody has a side they like to start with. So what I'm looking for next, again, with a really good sharp fillet knife. This thing is way bigger than you need for this, but it's you know, the one I feel like using. So I'm going to take that knife. You're going to see right there, just there's that little lip that it's a gill plate. I want to go forward because there's still some good meat in here. I'm going to take that thing. I'm going to go down like so. Okay. See that opening cut? On a trout, that's what I'm looking for. You're not going to lose a whole lot in this section here because you're into the skull. Then I'm going to come back a little bit off of that. I'm going to lift this up. And right about like that. That section is important because I want that meat to stay on there. And I'm going to keep this knife right along the ribs. Or I'm sorry, the actual spine. We're going to go back. You can feel it cutting. That's the beauty of having a flexible knife. You're not losing a lot of meat. And it just glides through. Okay, so you see that? See how close that is to the spine? Come around this side. That's right along the spine. There's not any meat loss. Now, here's the next important part. I've noticed that when you're cutting these things up, you would always have one good fillet and one that was kind of okay. Leaving this here and here, the reason for that was if you go through and I make that cut connect and this cut connect, then there's nothing on this side and you flip this thing over, there's nothing supporting this. So that angle where the backbone naturally off the piece of meat sitting here is almost in a linear fashion, like straight, is off because it sags in the bottom. So your knife, instead of being able to just glide straight down a smooth backbone, is going to have a dip to follow and you're going to have all kinds of crappiness going on. So on this side, I'm going to grab it. I'm going to find that little spot right there. I'm going to go down. Sometimes you got to come up a little bit. Same deal. You can see that's a mirror image cut straight across there if you look from the top. We're pretty close to it. Then I'm going to pick about the same spot. Right about there. I'm going to push that thing in. I can feel the backbone. I'm going to come up over the backbone. And we're just going to go down like so. And It's always going to fight you a little bit of that fin. We're trying to keep this as well on top of the other slab of meat. And then on this one, I'm going to come right at the tail. See that? Then, since we're done with the other side, I can go right ahead, again, trying to stay on the backbone, and connect that thing. It's going to come off like so. And then this side, you only have this couple inches. You can see what I was talking about right here if you look from this edge. Right away, that backbone wants to sag instead of staying straight. So then we just... Make sure that bottom's up. Make sure our hands are out of the way. Connect that. That one little spot wants to fight me, no big deal. And then we just take this like so, just glide out. And this one, of course, wants to take a little bit of the tail, not the end of the world. We can trim them up. It's the beauty of flight. And you have two flights. And pretty much no waste on that thing. Looks like I got a little crazy, but most guys are going to be the first time's going to be a lot worse than that. <laughs> now, going forward from there, the next thing that we're going to do is to take this rib cage out. Because this whole section here, you can see all these bones. You can hear them. You hear that? Because obviously, what people want when they do a, a fly is a bonus fly. You're going to go here right behind the bones. And this is again where a pretty sharp knife is going to help you out and sort of curve it around. Now trout don't have a lot on the outside of this rib cage. You can see there's not a lot of meat left there, but presentation it should always be a concern with something because the idea would be that you would put that on your dinner table. Now, we don't need to do the other side just for the point of putting together a video. You can trim this up. Actually, most places, if you're dealing with stock trout, they do tell you, at least in Pennsylvania, to get rid of the fatty spots. Trout and salmon are pretty fatty fish. So you can trim that up so it's nice. And then you'll still have this set of bones here. You, you can hear them. 
what I found is that you need to freeze that just even overnight, just get it frozen and then thaw it out. And then you can go through, I get a little container of water and I do just that. Run everything like that. If you, and then pull them out with the tweezers right down the road. You go boom, 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 until you take your finger and go back over it and don't feel any bones. But it has to freeze for it to release from the meat. If I try and do this thing fresh, you're going to lose this whole section of meat when you pull them out. So if you would ever, and this, this is something that tells you fish freshness, freshness. If they go to a store, you do not pull those bones absolutely fresh. Right now, it'll just be an empty hole in this filet will look like garbage. If you ever, you know, this really presentation wise, that looks good. You throw that in the skillet. Normally what I would do is throw it in cast iron, skin down, skin will flake off. You peel that off. And once you pull these bones, which is that next step, absolutely bonus fly fish tacos fish anything and that's the big complaint people have with trout because they are a bony fish but once you remove that rib cage section which you can do immediately and wait that next day normally these will be thrown in the freezer overnight and then i'll thaw them down and then just go through and you can get pretty quick with it you want to pull them this way the direction that they go not this way because those bones are actually in here at an angle facing towards the rear of the fish so when i just go through you do this, and you can see they're already standing up a lot of them. You just take your fingernail and go right down through. There's one that's standing up pretty good. It'll be even more extreme after you freeze and thaw it, and just go, hump, 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 hump. Again, keeping that angle towards the front. Put it down in the freezer. After that, you're totally boundless, and people, you need it any way you want.